same group and it would appreciate it. And to those who engage to the Facebook, you can share there as well. So thank you in advance for your cooperation. God bless you all and welcome to the group. Back over to you. Thank you. Uh, go ahead, Dad, if you'd like to lead us in prayer, please, before we start. Now you may unmute your mic. Thank you. Thank you. For that. Thank you. All right. So good morning again, once again, um, everyone. The Lord bless you. We're so excited about what God has to say to us this morning. Thank you again, uh, Prophetess Sheila, for your input and um, for everyone in the listening lounge area. Now, listen, um, before we pray, we do want to remind you that this only works as you participate in the process and that which is what Prophet Sheila was saying. Make sure that you share and of course comment. We always look in the chat room to make sure uh, that you're engaged and uh, we, we often make mention of those chats in the conversation. So you can be a part of this discussion this morning as well as we discuss how to walk through your open door. Father, we bless you. Thank you for your divine presence. That is not just here in this room, but it fills the earth. The whole world is filled with your glory. We acknowledge that you are God and besides you there is none other. And Father, we bless you as we enter your gates with thanksgiving into your courts with praise. We acknowledge our complete and utter confidence and dependency on you, Lord God. From you flows life itself, Lord God. And we bless you that in your presence there is fullness of joy and at your right hand there are pleasures evermore we bless you this morning we call you the king of kings we call you the lord of lord we thank you that you are the god that heal us up of all of our disease every concern every worry father before we ask you for anything we thank you for everything lord god from you comes every good and perfect gift there is no shadow of change there is no variableness you have no attitude problem you never wake up on the wrong side of the bed because you're the god that neither, neither sleeps nor slumbers he that keepeth israel never sleeps never slumbers and so father we thank you lord god that while we even slumber your eyes are in every place beholding everything lord god and so we bless you we honor you we give you the proof sit on the throne of our worship sit on the throne of our praise and be magnified and father we'll give you all the praise we join in with the four and twenty elders at the very mention of your name we bow ourselves before you and prostrate ourselves in acknowledgement of your supreme authority and that everything that everything is that subject to your words father you speak and it is so we bless you for it now father i pray that even as we begin this conversation again that you will continue to watch over the apostle and her her companion as they're traveling uh, to Mauritius. Lord, thank you that you've been faithful to take them to where they are right now, to their final destination, that your angels are encamped about them to keep them in all of their ways. And we give you glory, honor, and praise. And it is so, and in the name of Jesus, it shall be. Amen and amen. Unique. All right, the room is ending in. No, I'm just kidding. Again, everybody, welcome to Prophetic in the Session. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Michael Norman, for that uh, impactful prayer. And uh, as stated before, uh, Apostle Norman uh, is still traveling. It takes a while for her to do all the traveling, but she'll definitely be back tomorrow. So I have all the moderators on stage that will be assisting and holding it down, and I appreciate the moderators, FYI. So you look up to the top of the room. Um, it says, how to walk through your open door. So the notes that uh, Apostle Norman sent over to us, I'll be reading, of course, adding my commentary per usual. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and start. Um, walking through your open door in a biblical sense typically refers to, I mean, recognizing and seizing the opportunities that God provides for growth, service, and the fulfillment of his will in your life. The concept is often associated with passages that speak about God opening doors no one can shut. All right, uh, Revelation, uh, Revelation 3.8. And guidance towards path of righteousness for his namesake, Psalms 233. Uh, here are some biblical principles that can guide you into walking through your open door. So number one, prayer and seeking guidance. 
begin with prayer, asking God to direct your steps, and he will make it clear to you. James 1, 5 is actually one of my favorite scriptures. Uh, encourages seeking wisdom from God, who gives generous with all without finding fault. Also, he talks about that in James three seventeen as well, FYI. And number two is discernment. You know, I'm so big on discernment. I always say discernment is concernment. And if you concern, that means your discernment is picking up. And you need to follow it. So discernment, use discernment to recognize the doors God is opening for you. This involves understanding God's word and aligning your decisions with his teachings and character. First John 4, 1 advises testing the spirits to see whether they are from God. So yeah, I remember yesterday uh, with the young lady who I was speaking over and I was saying, good thing you didn't go through that door because you went through that door. It was a trap. So what? That's part of having discernment, which uh, obviously she used because she didn't fall for the traps of the enemy or the traps that was laid out, but, you know, to try to stop her from going to the door that God wanted her to go to. So we talk about um, discernment. Also, you have to learn and understand in God's trust because everything that looks good, I know it says it all the time, but it's the truth, ain't good. So number three is faith and trust. Walking through an open door often requires faith and trust in God, especially when the path is uncertain or challenging. Hebrews 11, 1 defines faith as confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. That's why I love 2 Corinthians 4, 16, 18. I just go to the 18, 18th verse where it says, that's why we look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are not seen. Because the things that are seen is temporary, but the things that are not seen is eternal. You know, don't look at temporary situations because you don't know the, you know, the plans and the openings that God has for you. And then pretty much what you see is a distraction to stop your action. Look at the word distraction has the word action. So don't, don't let something distract your act. And then number four says obedience. Following through on the opportunities God provides requires obedience to his commands. John 14, 15 shows that love for Jesus is demonstrated through obedience to his commands. Yeah, I know some of you guys have been following the room for many years. You know, my, my, oh, my old ones, uh, you know, my old heads and stuff like that. And I say old heads, it means like, you know, the ones who've been there a long time. And uh, I remember uh, my mom was saying that it was a major, major, major door that was opening. And the Holy Spirit told her, he said, no, because you don't have the grace for it. In other words, you she wasn't ready for it. She wasn't prepared for it. And it would have been, you know, it was a blessing, but it would have been overwhelming. It would have been too much for her to take in because what? You didn't go through the training process. You know, that's why I call it the quiet season before you walk into your loud season. You go to training, preparation, you know. So even with a job, before you even get that promotion, you either have the experience are you earning or both? Because you want, because you never want to get something that you're not ready for because he doesn't want you to fail. He wants you to prevail. And that's also part of using wisdom. And then number six is preparation and action. While waiting for God, you know, to open doors, prepare yourself so that you are ready to walk through them when they open. Ephesians 2.10 indicates we are created for good works, which prepare in advance for us to do, right? This is something you prepare in advance. So that's why you will look at someone and you be like, what? This happened to you that quickly? And they're like, no, 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 no. I was prepared for this. No, 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 no. I was, I was ready for this. I was trained for this. It's like a marathon. I was trained to win this race. I was trained to win this race that my enemy can't keep pace. I was trained to win this race that the enemy can't trace. Yeah, so that's why sometimes they'll see people, but you don't know the hardship. You don't know the workship that they went through to get to that position. You only see the outcome. But you didn't see, like it says in Matthew 6, 6, you know, you go to your father, you shut the door, you go to him in secretly, and what he sees in secretly, he rewards you openly. And then so we look at number seven, continuation number seven, thanksgiving and praise. Acknowledge God's provision and guidance with thanksgiving and praise. Philippians 46 said to present your request to God with thanksgiving. Even like it says in Psalms 105, make a joyful noise to the Lord, all you land, start the Lord with gladness, come before his presence with singing. So when you look at number eight as well, community and counsel, seek the advice and support of wise, godly people. Proverbs 15, 22 notes the plans fail for lack of counsel. But with many advisors, they said they will succeed. Moses had counselors. I believe he had like 70 elders, I believe. You know, uh, Mordecai, um, I mean, Esther had, you know, a council, Mordecai, which which helped a lot because, as you know, they helped the Jews, the Jews. But it wasn't, it wasn't, even though she did the work, but it was because of Mordecai. You know, he said that it's good to have people around you for wisdom. 
guidance. Everybody needed, no matter how old or young you are. Again, with Exodus, when Jethro visited Moses, you know, he was giving him guidance and telling him, you working yourself too much. You're going to kill yourself, bruh. I'm paraphrasing. He's like, you're going to kill yourself, bruh. You know, that's like wisdom that he was given, given to him. That's something that everybody needs. Presidents, they have leaders. Queens, even queens and kings. Like, you, even their royalty, but they still have leaders. Jesus, who do you turn to? God. Even when he felt certain ways, even when he was on the cross, he was like, why have you forsaken me? You know, everybody encountered that or felt or felt that were before the cross, you know, that we felt, you know, a certain way. But God gave us his insurance like he gave Gideon to remind him who he is to Moses when he said in Exodus 3, 14, let me remind you who I am. You know, I am, you know, and things like that. Even Exodus 14, 14, hold your peace. God will fight for you. I still have the door open for you because I am your locksmith. So don't give my key to the wrong hands. So number eight. It says community and counsel. Seek the advice of support. I said that. Okay, so the last thing here is uh, walking through your open door biblically involves a combination of spiritual discipline, character, qualities, and practical steps, all underpinned by deep trust in God's serenity and goodness. That is true, so true. Another thing about opening doors, you want to make sure your character goes with you. I love Psalms 192. Bless, 192. bless you know, the Lord. You know, bless those who seek with all his heart. You know, to keep his character, because I always say this, to keep character is to keep his stature. To keep his stature is to keep character. It keeps you in order, you know, keeps you in, in a position that you won't get too big head. God don't God don't want you to get too big head. When you get hard head, you're going to fall on your head really hard and do things like that. But in other words, he's saying, you know, even though you want to go a certain route or feel like it kept closing and closing, he said, don't worry about that, because once I expose you, that would be your opportunity, like it says in Isaiah 60, verse 1, to rise and shine right? And for he has come, right? And that's where you would get that spotlight at the right moment. But you want to be prepared. You want to be disciplined. You want to be trained. You want to be focused. Study, right? What do you say? Study and show yourself approved. You're not going to go to a job interview and don't be prepared with a resume. You're not going to go to speak at a, a church and you don't have one thing. Even if you called on the spot, you still did the training where I've been called on the spot. Anybody know when you were an apostle president, Norman? You you better be you better be in tune with God. I always say when you in tune with God, you move with God. And she'll call you on the spot. You always want to be prepared. And to be honest, when you have that prayer life, it doesn't. To be honest with you, it doesn't turn off. It will immediately. Yeah, I remember one time he, I was like, "What? They, she wanted me to say something?" And this is what the Holy Spirit said. He said, "Just open your mouth." And when he opened my mouth, it wasn't only the things that he was speaking through, but there's also things that I study, I worked for. Yes, God does the work. But God did the work as well. So it's like we're doing it together. Like you do the work, he would do it for you. Even says in the Bible, man who don't work, he don't eat, period. And, you know, and things like that. So you always want to be prepared because you never know where you're going to go. You may not know everything. It's not about knowing everything. That's why I said trust in the Lord thy like God. In Psalms 32, 7, 8, I will guide thee and teach them the way that I will go. I will guide thee with my eye. So if he tells you to go somewhere, even with most, most didn't know, didn't know everything. He didn't know everything where he was going. Gideon he did not even know he was going to end up uh, winning the war. Because why? Because once he realized, or let me put my trust in God. So when you put your trust in God, that's when he will lead you. He will give you the keys. Like it says in Isaiah 22, 22, right? The keys that are laid upon David. No, no man shall shut, right? So whatever door that you shut, no man shall open. Whatever door you open, no man shall shut. That's why I say, you know, don't put too much trust in man because if man bring you up, they can bring you down. But when God put you in that position, they can't touch their anointing. When God put you in that position, they won't be able to move you. They will be moved before they, you even get moved. You get moved, you'll be get moving up to another level. So just remember that. Just stay focused and remember who your locksmith. When you got the right locksmith, he will go ahead and guide you and lead you and tell you which door to open. And that's where you will have success and blessings, not only for yourself, but pros prosperity is also helping other people, raising the next generation, raising and training other people so they can go ahead and walk and learn. That's why I salute, you know, my leaders. I salute my elders. I salute, you know, ancestors from a history-wise because a lot of us wouldn't be here without the sacrifice of our parents, our, our, our history, you know, wise, even Jesus, he made a, he made a lot of sacrifices as well. So that's one thing you have to honor. They went through a lot of things, but on the end they went. So just remember that don't lose hope and don't lose focus. So dad, Dr. Uh, Michael Norman, can you tell me an opportunity or a time that you really thought that you wanted to go to this door because it looked good and it sounded good, but you just knew 
you know what? Mm, it's, it's it's not right. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go to that. I'm gonna get some because I'm experienced. You are experienced, and you had your discernment. Oh yeah. Well, there's several times over. Well, several times, but again, it boils down to uh, sobriety. You know, not everything that is offered to you is for you. And so I have to first take a hard look at myself and see, uh, determine whether or not I'm prepared for that kind of exposure. We had some offers and television and things of that nature that we were like, um, no, no, thank you. We're going to we're going to go. We're going to pass on that. And uh, they could have probably been very lucrative. But again, we're not money driven. And that's kind of been my attitude uh, pretty much all of my life. Now, I believe in compensation, but at the same time, I'm not driven to do any, everything just because there's a dollar sign attached to it. Because, again, like you said, of the young lady yesterday, it could be something. Uh, uh, well, it is always something. There's always a consequence with everything. If you accept something new, it's going to bring new encounters, things you've never possibly seen before. That's why every promotion comes with a whole new set. You know, we say new level, new devil. Well, it's not always devils, but they're definitely new experiences that are, are waiting you, new circumstances that are at that level that you don't experience currently at the level you are. So you got to have a, a sober spirit, be able to look at yourself and see, uh, determine if I'm prepared because of what we often, you know, what we're often moved by or intimidated by is time. You know, we feel like you know, if I don't take it now, it may not come back again. But trust me, if you did it before, you'll do it again. That's right. It's actually a song. I seen you move mountains. Surprise the children. You're the only one who can't sing. I can't sing either. How you feel? No, I'm just playing. We'll probably see you again. I want to say, Dad, remember I'm your favorite. You know, one time he told me I sounded like a dying angel, but he actually came back to apologize. I was like, Dad, you don't have to apologize. It's okay. I know my voice is good. It's okay. It's okay, baby boy. But uh, yeah, that's She true. made a joyful noise. And, uh, <laughs> it did sound noisy. She, so check. <laughs> <laughs> let's be realistic. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm, I mean, you know, let's be realistic. Like you could, you could be chill all you want to, but when God come in that room, I sound like Whitney Houston. I don't care what nobody's saying. This is such a divine connection. Because when you See, now, it's the true, right? Because, you prophet, you, 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 come on. That part right there. <laughs> you know, nobody can love you like your parents. That. When you connect it, you protect it. Because God was the one I selected. All right, properly, Sheila, I go ahead and uh, toss it to you. Now, I know you have, like, demonstrations where you were just like, is it is it time yet? It's time to go to that door? Yes. It's time to go to the door? And then once you went to that door, the right door, what was that feeling? Oh my God. Oh my God. First of all, before I just give an answer to that, um, I, I just want to just remind everyone, uh, just to reset the room, uh, awesome, awesome, uh, uh, leading, uh, of the room, Pastor Michael, uh, Pastor Unique, as always, as we are moving forward, uh, the room as our apostle president is traveling for those who just joined us on today. God is faithful. And so just, uh, Remind everyone, Mona, Dr. Leslie, just to remind everyone that moderators are in their place going forward. Because, come on, this is not about one person. This is about the move of God, uh, the prophetic agenda of God going forward. So we just honor Apostle Martina as she's traveling. We bid her and, and her companion traveling grace and mercy as they travel. Uh, we love Pastor Michael. That's her husband. Those that are new, she called out due to the room. He and uh, their beautiful daughter, uh, one of uh, their three children. Uh, she is here, probably unique, uh, doing what we do together, all of us, moving this room forward, moving the discussion forward uh, as Apostle Francina travels on today. So we're going to ask everyone, if you've not already shared the room, uh, do us a huge favor and share the room. Uh, go down to your, your device, the box, the arrow, the second icon on the left, and make sure you're sharing the room. But back to your question, again, we just read everyone on Facebook, on YouTube, and also on Clubhouse, welcome to Prophetic Intercession. Listen, when you actually, uh, you know, when it's time, and I believe that I just, I want to just piggyback on what Pastor Michael has mentioned um, and what you've shared as well, it's from the notes from Apostle Francina. 
I love what you talked about, how the German is so very, very important because the enemy has doors as well. And so I love what Pastor Michael said is that, uh, you know, don't be money driven. We cannot be money driven. I like to say it this way. I'm not uh, motivated by money. I'm motivated by mission. And so what is the mission? What is the assignment? And oftentimes, you know, I'm asked to speak and there is no honorary. I'm, I'm just being honest. Uh, they just want me to come and just encourage and to share. And, you know, and I, I, I'm okay with that, okay? But I also know that, you know, it is um, it is vital to make sure that you do have unrest in place where you are able to take care of your speaker. Come on, because uh, many of us, is full-time ministry. And so, you know, we, we just, it, I feel the weight of glory here today. But don't be motivated by money. Be motivated by missions because God will take care of you. I promise. I was, and oftentimes, the person when you don't have a certain amount, they will say, "Hey, well, you know, we or we'll tell them just whatever you feel the Lord is leading you to to bless me with." Then you know it's okay because some churches are not big, some uh, engagements are not big, but but they're big in God's eyes. And so, because you never know who God's calling you to minister to, uh, and that one person can be you know, the next world changer. So we just got to be, again, discerning, as you mentioned, um, uh, Prophet Unique, and also it's in the notes that when we're using discernment to recognize the doors that God is opening for us, this involves understanding God's word and aligning our decisions with his teachings and uh, his character. And so um, when when that when opportunities like that come, you know, it, it's a really exciting um, experience. It really is. Because you know God's prepared you, you prepared, you know, and that person prayerfully is led the Lord to invite you to come and share. And so when you actually go to that door, you know it's one that lives are going to be radically changed. Um, you know, and I'm one that, you know, when, when I'm preparing for a door or to go through a door, I'm first partaker of what God's given, given me for them. I first partake of it as well. So everybody's being blessed, including myself. And so to your answer, it is very exciting. It's very rewarding because at the end of the day, God is opening doors to make and shut and closing doors to make and open. And when you go into a, a factual door, with the, there's, there's going to be many adversaries. That's Bible. God is opening factual doors, doors where you've been called to do an assignment. I look at it as an assignment. And I also look at it as an opportunity, again, uh, for the body of Christ to be blessed and for the people to be equipped, to be encouraged. Glory, I feel the weight of God. It, to answer that question, it is exciting. It is rewarding. And it is God. And so I'll turn it back over to you, unless you want me to move forward with moderating the room. But, oh, back over to you. Um, this room is fire already. Again, we've been giving instructions to the notes, uh, to those that are here, those that are listening, how to walk through your open door. Props Unique, back over to you. All right. Thank you for the news. Sound like a news. Over you. It's kind of raining over here. But that's <laughs> you. <laughs> it's raining the Holy Spirit. Not raining men. I ain't going to lie. Look, look, I'm still human at the end of the day. Uh, but, yeah, so back to what you were saying, Prophets. I mean, you're, 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 you're absolutely right. I mean, just like any, like any job or any mission, I mean, you award any, I mean, only time I would say, like, Hey, you're just specifically going, going here and don't worry about that. But even with speaking engagements in general, at least cause you know, I, I do the business and whatnot, you put up front, this is what it is. And this is what it is. And sometimes depending on what mission you go to, and sometimes, you know, certain people, you might have to say, Hey, I have to might put this, this down, whatever, because it's also integrity. You know, I always tell people, you take care of the kingdom, he takes care of you. Whether he used the people to do it, whether he do yeah. it, but you still have to honor that. And not just because when you do that, not only do you respect their anointing and take advantage of them, but you disrespect God's anointing. You don't know what these preachers and teachers are evangelists and whatnot they use it for. You know, everybody say, oh, it's just for them. That's not necessarily true. Sometimes they use permission. These people have families. People have kids. Some are, some are in college. Some of them are planning for their certain exactly. business and whatnot. You know, like you, you never know because anytime I even once, you know, if I invite someone to speak to someone, 
I mean, I know it's business, but it's also kingdom business. So now you take care of your business, but you got to take care of your kingdom business. And then you wonder why some millenniums or some people don't want to like do it. You still have to honor and respect that and still have integrity when they come. You have, Sometimes you have to put the agreement down because like, you know, I'm sure probably should you give people the benefit of the doubt. I, you know, you probably think I don't have to like say what I need. I'll just, you know, just come. And then if you keep doing that, eventually I only want you to get broke, but you would get used. So it's not That's about true. money, of course not. But you tell your bills that they ain't gonna understand that. You tell your landlord that they're not gonna understand that because you That's have to so honor true. people. It is true. You have to honor them. I, I honor people. Not reading the evangelists and the things they had to do and whatnot with Philip, with Stephen, with Peter, with John, all in Acts, you know, and whatnot. That that took a that took like a lot of work. And then I see how hard my mom worked. I see how hard my dad worked. And I see how hard, you know, you know, God's people, you know, God's people work. And you know, when they have to come up there and preach and teach, you know, when they have a bad day, when they had hits or they not feeling well, like you, you, you just you just never know because you have your persona, oh, that is strong and doing their business, but because God honors that, that even though you're going through that, you're still going to minister to the people. And he honors that because, like I always say, when you're obedient, he's more lenient. That's something that I learned. I said, oh, man, so when I'm obedient, I got this. Who knew when you listen? But, yeah, so I could definitely uh, attest to that, that anything and anything that you do, whether it's whether it's, it's a Christian business or not, it's still you still should have principles. You still whether you in the industry ministry, you still have to have principle, and you know, and you and still honor that. Especially the ones who they said I would do it for free. I mean, that's that's fine and that's good, but you know, God take care of His people, and He wants you to be success. Peter and John, even with uh, Acts, you know, in Acts uh, four, it was called sharing all things. They were they were they were very successful. And even it says in uh forty two in the twenty third verse of Acts uh three, I'm sorry, four, they said they lack no good thing because why they took care of the kingdom and it took care of them. So I just wanted to go out and throw that out. But uh Dr. Ferguson, what do you have to say about that or what you want to talk about? <laughs> good morning, Providence Unique. Pastor Michael, Brother Sheila, everyone in the room. I think it's important that we are having the conversation how to walk through your open door because as this is that year that that is happening, and as I think about everything that you've been talking about so far, preparation is key. And I think that's where we have to be careful because we're a society today that procrastinates and waits to the last minute uh, for all things. And I would hate for us to be like uh, the virgins who, you know, were there and had to leave and go back and get something and the door was shut. I think it's important too, if God is telling us that the door, this is a year of open doors, God is saying this, this is not what the neighbor or the friend is saying this is not a time to say be passive about it it's not a time to be complacent it's a time if god is saying that this is the year of open doors he's not why would he open a door that he wouldn't want you to go through so preparation is key and part of preparation is prayer and seeking him lord what is it that i need to be working on right now lord what is it that i need to correct in my character Character. Because the truth is, you can be completely qualified, skilled, the best there is. But if you don't have the character to be able to stand, people would prepare to have someone less qualified than to have someone with a nasty attitude or character that isn't professional, a character that causes division and strife. So whatever it is, and discernment, because if the Lord is saying that this is a year of open door, opportunities will come that are not the Lord, that they will look good. And so will you have the discernment to be able to say, or not just a discernment, be strong enough, close enough to the Lord and trust the Lord that you recognize his voice that you won't go through because of your own desires, the desire for fame and glory, desire for people to know me, desire. Those are the types of things that usually get us in trouble. And that's the reason too, we want to be healthy and be whole in our mind. Because if you got insecurity, low self-esteem, if you worry about what people say and you want 
want to prove to people who mishandled you in the past that, oh, look at me now. And the enemy opens a door and you go through it that you're not prepared for. It is a dangerous thing for you. So preparation in all these different areas and really just being comfortable in the Lord and giving him praise and thanksgiving in the fact that, God, I thank you for not opening a door yet if I'm not prepared for it, because what is it to get what you desire and not be able to maintain it? You don't just go through a door to go, but will you be able to sustain it and maintain it once you get through the door? And so I will yield there. Thanks so much this morning. So that was good. I like how she said it. And I would just yield right there. Thank you for watching CBS, guys. Like she just nailed it, but I just tossed the mic. That is uh, so true what you what you said. It's like when well, he trusts you and open that door, how many times that doors have been open and we couldn't even keep it? Like, come on now. Like, I always tell people, like, when that moment comes, you don't want to miss it. But don't let it just be a moment. Turn your moment into your movement. Don't just stop at that one thing. Learn from it and then move from it and then continue going up from there. So, uh, Dr. Not Dr. <laughs> Mike Ebron, welcome to the stage. So, you know, from millennium to a millennium, how do you handle your doors? Good morning. Good morning to you. Honor to Apostle Francina in her absence. Honor to you, Pastor Michael Norman. To all of my kingdom sisters here on the platform. Dr. Earl's not here yet. To all of my kingdom sisters on the platform, good morning to each and every single one of you as well. Uh, Prophet is unique. So how do I handle my doors as a millennial? Well, I, I, I execute the strategies and the tools and tips set forth by way of my apostle. And so one of the things that you, you stated in uh, the lesson was, uh, I believe it was point number two, was that discernment piece, discerning uh, what door uh, that God has laid out before me. And not only what door, but what type of doors. There's different types of doors. So, for instance, in my office, I need a key to, to, to get into my, my office door. So I got to put the key in the door and turn it. Uh, but if I go through a, uh, a, a different building or a different section, then uh, it's an automatic door. So all I have to do is get in proximity. And when the sensor picks up uh, that someone is in proximity of the sensors, it opens automatically. There's other doors that you might have to push. And so when we hear that we're in the year of the open door, yes, it may be the year of the open door. And yes, it may be the door for you. But it's important to know what type of door, because the type of door will teach you and instruct you how to handle the door and how to handle the room that you're walking into. So that definitely is important, definitely is important, definitely is important. Another thing that you pointed out in the lesson that you said, and uh, Prophet is unique, I always love your bars. And let me also put in this, this shout out to you and Prophet Sheila, as well as Pas uh, Pastor Michael Norman. I was in the room yesterday, I was just traveling, so I couldn't come up to the platform. You guys did an awesome job yesterday as well, handling kingdom business here in the room. Uh, another thing that you said was, uh, I believe it was number six, was that preparation and action, preparation and action. So whatever type of door, whether it's a door you pull, whether it's a door you push, whether it's an automatic door, it requires execution. The worst thing that can happen is God is opening a door and you're standing still because you have not discerned that it's the door. You have no uh, idea how to execute. Uh, and, and walk through that door. So you're just standing still, missing the door, missing the moment. You're not doing anything because you have not, you, you feel inadequate. You feel, I have not appeared. Maybe it's not the right time. And so the door is just there and you're not doing anything. God can open the door all day long, but it's, in, it's not until you execute a movement. It's not until you exercise your faith. Faith without works is dead. It's not until Abram, had to leave uh, uh, the land that God instructed him to, to, to leave in order to make his name great, in order to make him a great nation, in order to change Abram into Abraham. And so it requires the exercising of faith. It requires the exercising of obedience to the instruction that God has given unto you. Another thing real quick, you said prophet is unique. And I always love your prophetic boss. You said that in distraction, the word distraction has the word action. 
You said, don't let distractions stop your actions. I'll say it one more time. Don't let distractions stop your actions. And so if you just live long enough, you know, life is going to be life. Problems are going to be arising. The adversary is going to be the adversary. But at the end of the day, you must adapt the kingdom mindset as uh, Nehemiah did when he was instructed to rebuild the wall. One hand, they were rebuilding and constructing. The other hand, they were raging war at the same time. He did not allow the distractions of the adversary. He did not allow the enemies. He did not allow those that were trying to tear down or delay the process. Stop him from rebuilding. He adopted a strategy. He had, uh, once again, constructing with one hand, fighting with the other hand. He had a day shift and a night shift. By any means necessary, come hell or high water, when God says that this is your moment, when God says that this is your door, when God says that this is your opportunity, you have to do what you have to do to pursue, to conquer, and to quest it all. So I yield the mic right there, Prophet. you. That was good. Um, as you were speaking, you made a good point. It's like you're, you're going... Do a, do a door. You need to know what kind of door it is. I use an example. As you guys, some notes, my mom already uh, mentioned, I usually don't talk about it or whatever, but I'll just mention for this case. So when I was in Miami working the summit, um, I was uh, opening the door to go into my homegirl's room, and the door slammed on my ankle and it broke, right? Because I didn't know what kind of door it was. So literally, when you, you, when you go into a door that you don't know what you're equipped for, it can literally hurt you, right? It can literally crack you because what you went immaturely. Even when people are pruning grapes, if the grapes are not, did not grow properly or it's not, or it's not maturely set, it can't produce, right? It can't go out into the world. It can't be used, right? Because it's too early and it's too soon. So you want to be equipped and ready and mature to take on any door, but also study what door it is. Don't just assume because it's an arrow and it looks all nice. I'll go through it. You know, you are going to go through it if you go through the wrong one. But just make sure before you touch that door, before you open in that door, just make sure. And, you know, God is saying is that, you know, like I know that that hurt because you thought that door was for you. and You feel like you had to wait because you didn't know what he was protecting you from. And God is saying that don't look at the hurt, but look at your worth. You say you were so much more far than what, you know, what they were going to try to use you for or try to get you to go to or try to distract you for. He said, don't look at the hurt. He said, look at the worth. Right. And even if uh, he was talking about Mike Ebron was talking about building, you know, that's part of being kingdom builders. Even in Proverbs 14, one, a wise woman built her house, but the foolish pluck it down with her hands. You know, be construction workers, don't be destructive workers. So I go ahead and uh, pass it over to uh, Prophetess Francina. Are you able to talk? Good morning. Good morning. There we go. I hear your <laughs> Good morning, my beautiful prophetess. Good morning to everyone. Good morning, Pastor Norman. Good morning to Prophetess uh, Sheila. Good morning, Sister Sharon, Lady Sharon, Dr. Ferguson, Apostle Mike Ebron, Dr. Leslie, Dr. Earl, Sister Pamela. Good morning to all of you all and definitely have good morning to VIP audience and those on the other platform. Good morning to you. This is a great day to celebrate God. This is what I'm talking about, how to walk through your open door. However, to walk through that door, only thing came to me was Proverbs 3 and 5 at 5 through 6. It said, trust in the Lord with all that heart and lean not to thy own understanding and he shall direct your path. Come on somebody, I need God to direct my path. There's some camouflage doors, there's some prophetic doors, there's some ordained doors, but the door that I want to walk in is those that God has ordained and he leads me. So therefore, how do I lead and walk in that door? I use wisdom. I have to have wisdom. If all that supplication, get that wisdom and understand it and stay a prayer for life. You know, sometimes when God is about to open doors, you've already gone through your preparation. You've already been going through the warfare. You've already been going through some trials and tribulations. You wonder why these fiery dots are coming against you. You're wondering why certain things are happening in this moment because you don't understand God is preparing a door. The things that you prayed about is already on its way. Some things that you already solicited to the Lord, he's already preparing a way. But along the journey, 
There are some things that he's preparing you for because one thing about it and two things for sure, when you get in the door and you get through the door, I want your character to remain. I'm talking to somebody because one thing about it, your character, your gift can get you there, but can your character keep you there? So therefore, when you in the door, I want your character to remain. So no matter how somebody may come at you with left, right or whatsoever, you know how to handle yourself. You know how to respond properly. Let your words be seasoned with salt that you know how to answer every man. I don't care if it's an ignorant thing. I don't care if it's a godly thing. You need to know how to answer every man when you walk through this door. Because when you're at the table while you're in the door, you're already prepared. So when you're at the table, you're not going at the table empty-handed. A lot of us want to go through doors, but when you get to the door, there's a room of other people in the door. But when you sit there, they're at a table. But when they're at the table, what are you bringing to the table? Don't go to the table. Still celebrate that you're in the room. Celebrate that you brought something to the table. You brought your wisdom. You brought your understanding. You brought your gift. You know your knowledge. You know your understanding. And everything that getting, get understanding in God. God's going to give that to you. Your discernment. You talked about discernment. I promise you, I have to have discernment. I have to have that. I have to discern where I'm at. Who am I talking to? Who am I dealing with? Who is my destiny helper in this season? You have to have discernment and definitely stay humble. That part right there. You can stay right there. Stay humble. When God elevates you, that ain't time for you to look up. It's time for you to go down. Go down on your knees. Go down to humble yourself. Serve the very least of them. That's what God, when you serve the very least of them, you're serving God. So don't go through the door and get lifted up like you don't forget how you don't got there. Because it took you through all that hell and high water that you went through to get through the door. So don't get in the door and don't forget how to be humble. Don't forget how to prepare unto God and give God the glory. I'm going to leave it right there. Thank you for allowing me to share. Drop it. I promise you killed it. I promise you. <laughs> I promise you I'm telling the truth. <laughs> you know, even as listening to, uh, you know, Prophetess, you know, Francina, even with the delivery, you could just tell this is someone who experienced certain hits, who experienced things, who had to fight. And to be honest, she's still fighting. You oh, know, so when she, she say these when she say these things, she's not just saying, you know, just to get like a mic, you know, just to get like a little tap tap or I promise you, you know, out. Oh this is from someone who's like been through the ringer, you know, who's still, you know, still going to certain things. But he's like, if you overcame certain things, what makes you think you're not going to overcome this season to go to the other season? And like I tell people, when you don't know the reason, you can mess up your season. So when you're in a certain position, that's the time to listen. You the word position, it has the word sit. Sit and listen. Meditate with your heart in your bed and be still. Like I said, Psalms 46, 5. 46, I'm sorry, 4, 5. Uh, even I'm sorry, four four. So even the songs four four in the message version, I love it to give. I'm just giving you a paraphrase where it's like, shut your mouth and wait on the burden. You know how many times we just we just jump ahead because we thought that's what that's what we thought he heard we heard him say, or we thought that's what we want to go, or we thought that's what we wanted to you know to be there and whatnot. But he was like, wait, 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 wait. Wait on my downloads, right? So I give you strategy. That's how you outshine the rest. That's how you outlast. You know, he's not trying to get you to a temporary season. That doesn't that doesn't even make sense. And I like how she was saying, you know, stay humble. You know, for my little millennium, just stay humble with the bag. You don't want to fumble the bag. How many times have you go when I I'm gonna say what I mean? So you you're you're so successful and you're you're a humble, but once it starts getting to your head. You start getting loose, you know, doors, necessary doors start happening. Then you lose, you lose what you work for. That's unnecessary. Holy Spirit saying is, I'm trying to help you avoid unnecessary warfare. But the thing about it is when you lead, you take heed. When you lead, you believe. When you believe and you receive. So, uh, Dr. Leslie, are you there? Are you working? Give me a whisper. Um, I'm working right now. So I'm going to pass. Thank you. I'm listening. Gotcha. All right. Uh, Dr. Earl, do you want to chime in on this? Good morning. I was trying to open my mic. And yes, I would like to chime in on this. I appreciate this conversation this morning, how to walk through your open door. And as I was listening to everyone, I would like to say all of the above to everything that was said, but let me uh, attend to my manners. Good morning, Pastor Wisdom. Good morning, Prophet Sheila. And good morning, Prophet Unique and everyone on the platform, in the room, and all of the platforms. You know, um, the one thing I thought about, about how to walk through your open door in my mind went directly to the 12 spies that Moses sent to spy out the land. The land flowing with milk and honey. 
and they saw all the greatness in the land. And when they returned, all of them except for one brought back an evil report about the door. When we come up to our door and God gives us a glimpse into what's behind our door, we have to have a conquering attitude to know that great is he that is within me than he that is within the world. Because when you go through an open door, first of all, it's going to be something greater than what you have done before. You're going to see and meet people much bigger and wider and more experienced than what you had experienced before. When you walk through an open door, in your eyes, you might look smaller than the people. You might go into these people with multi-million dollar, billion dollar businesses, but God has allowed you to look into your open door, getting ready, getting ready to go through. So when you are going through your open door, you must be very careful about your attitude. You must be very careful about your mouth. You must be very careful about how you engage people. You must be care very careful about what you say to other people about your door because there will be at least 11 other folks who's going to tell you that you are a grasshopper and you cannot go through that door. <laughs> Come on. So when you get to your door and God is opening you to open the door, now when, you, when he opens the door, remember now, an open door means you can see inside. You can see inside. You have to have, uh, you have to gather yourself. If anyone ever seen the, uh, I wonder if I can remember right now, uh, the Adams family. And there's this part with the old grandmother who's this old witch kind of thing. And it's kind of, it's a humorous you know, show, the Adams family. And she says, gather your strength. And, and when you get to your door, you have to make sure you have gathered your strength, not just physically, but spiritually, because, because God is fixing to present you. That and you might look like something small to them, but but when you are coming in under the anointing of God, God will show you big to them. So that's why it's important that when you get to your open door, be careful about what's going on in your head, because you you your little voice in your own head will talk you out of that door. And I hear them. Come on, my. I'm talking about giving us, giving us that sermon, that old school sermon. <laughs> but yes, it was definitely uh, necessary, you know, for what he's speaking. You know, like I told you know, a lot of millenniums and whatnot, like listen to the ones who have gone before us. Not all of them, but most of the time, they, they, they know what they're talking about. Like even when I listen to people like speak and whatnot, I even listen to like the temperament, like the levels of, of the voice, you know, how when it goes up and, you know, when it goes fast, I'm like, oh, yeah, you can tell they've really been through something. Or sometimes not going to be like, hey, I ain't talking about that. But, yes, you could just, like, tell, like, with the with the temperament. And, you know, and I love it. You know, he was saying, you know, you got to, you know, you got to be physical ready, right, to be spiritual ready. Because when your spirit's out of order, your body's out of order, period. Your mindset is gone. Your thoughts gone. All the training is gone. Everything is not aligned because, you know, it's, it's all gone and whatnot. And the thing about it is. When you're knowing, even if, like I said, you don't know everything, understand, even if you don't understand everything, you know, appreciate it. You know, learn, okay, why Why am I in this position? Okay, why am I keep repeating these steps? Like I always say, when you don't complete, you repeat. And that's something I learned at an early age. I say, you know what, let me hurry up and get over this obstacle so I don't have to keep dealing with this. I don't want to keep dealing with this late 20s, 30s, 40s, and 50, let me go ahead and take care of that right now so I go, I, I've i got to be equipped and ready. Even for a battle, you already equipped and ready. You don't go to the battlefield and be like, all right, how we get ready for this battle? You know, it was always, you know, a strategy and whatnot. Moses, you know, got prepared for certain things. You know, he didn't understand everything. Gideon had his, had his training. And Deborah, the prophetess, you know, she was she was experienced with it, and you know she was ready for it. It comes in all level aspects, whether you physically fight for it, whether you spiritually fight for it, or whether you're getting guidance for it. That's one of the tools that you utilize and use to go on the next level, to go on the next phase, the next level. That's why I love it where Paul said in Second Corinthians ten twelve, you know, don't compare yourself among others. I'll give you a paraphrase because when you do that, you're not wise. You know, you're you're, you're like you're like fool. You know, you don't know what. And what occurs, like sometimes when people did it the right way, you don't know what it took to get there. I love what that man said. They were like, well, I want the position you have. Okay, well, you don't have to lose your wife, you don't have to lose your money. And they're like, wait, 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 wait a second. No, 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 I just want to get to get to the get to the anointing part. I want to get to the position. You don't want to get to the works without works is dead. 
and that's and that's crazy to me. Every sometimes I want to say this. Yes, there's a lot of sacrifice, but you gain more than what you lose based on what you choose. Just remember that. Based on what you choose, you gain more than what you lose. And how you you know how you live is how you give. Now that is very 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 true. I used to be stingy with a capital S and a couple exclamation points. But it started uh, changing, you know, once I started understanding. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm still, like, I don't give too easily. I still use my discernment. But people know, like, man, when Unique really gave me that, she knows she really meant to. At least you know that because I don't just be doing it. I don't have no problem saying no. When you know, you know how to say no. And so that's one of the things to use. And I love, you know, even when, in, even in Psalms 37, you know, fret not that stuff because the evildoers, they'll be in this, get some works in iniquity, but they just soon be cut down like the grass and within the green herd. What is he saying is, don't look at what it looks like on their end. It looks like they're doing it, uh, they got it the easy way, which is really the devious way, because they're soon going to be cut off. Even though it says in Psalms 37, 9, you know, evildoers be cut off, but those who wait on the Lord will inherit the earth. Because like I always say, God will interrupt, disrupt, but corrupt is for you to go up. You get the word interrupt, disrupt, and corrupt, it has to work up. He said, even do for us, and you, as long as you purr, you're still going to go up. Even when they try to destruct you, what now you still gonna go up they try to corrupt you or interrupt you still gonna go up you're not gonna be stuck even though you was like struck down you're not stuck down it's gonna be a take down of the enemy take down the obstacles he said as long as you stay focused know your purpose on purpose or it will create a lot of accident and i always say this as well because what god puts you he shifts you what he shifts you he lifts you what he lifts you he doesn't forget you so don't you forget what he gives you like it says in ephesians 4 1 is the prison of the lord the urge of the life of call that you have received so when, when he gives you those things it's so funny like you be want to have where certain things with other people but have but they want to have a certain things what you have just be glad that you have the position you in it could have been worse i'm not saying that we don't go through certain things or bad things but again it's a temporary thing it's life just because you're a christian do not mean you're not going to get hits so never use that well i'm a christian i don't know why it's happened it's life because of certain because of sins that we created history wise but because we didn't compromise we're not compromisers because when it compromise our position, God will give us wisdom on how to pass the stage. Or right, you will have to sit and listen and be like, all right, God, what did I do to do this? Okay, so that's what that's what happened. All right, let me I had some reflecting to do because there were certain things that I would like, you know, like I tell you this before I even started teaching and whatnot. I mean, like I said, I don't run from my call and I walk from it. I don't like the ministry. I'm gonna be honest. I don't like teaching and preaching nothing like that, but you know, I, I'll be obedient, but I do like helping others, especially the youth. Like the youth, like that is my weakness next to Reese's and chocolate milk and God and dad. But that's like my weakness and, and, and whatnot. Like you put a baby in front of me. I'm like, all right, how about you, what you, what that baby mean? Pampers? Like I gravitate to kids. Like I love them. Like I, I adore them and whatnot. But the thing about it is, you know, I understood because I didn't, to be honest, even though I saw things, I said things, I, I fully gave my life to God on August 19, 2019. I remember that day because I was going to do something crucial in my life and I fully gave it up to God because when you get rid, because when you get his fullness, that's what happens when you get rid of the foolishness. Get rid of the foolishness and get his fullness. So I went through the training process, but before the training process, I had to go through the healing process. He didn't want no corrupt prophet. I mean, I doubt I would do that, but I'm just using an example. He didn't want you to be saying stuff or bitter or saying stuff you shouldn't be saying because, you know, you're you're upset or, you know, you're hurt and whatnot. You have to go through the healing process, the learning process, the studying process, the sacrifice process, the giving process or whatever your weakness is. He tried to build you up so you could be prepared to go into the world. So I didn't start prophesying, to be honest with you, to like three years later. And then, of course, the rest... The rest is history because to me, my relationship with God was more important than me giving a prophetic word. I'm just being honest. I don't have to pro prophesy in my life. That's not important to me. I want to know him more. I want to download, get his, download his benefits. I want to understand certain things. I want to have a prayer life. Like my mom said and my dad said, you need to have a prayer life. You need to know the word. Don't just be going up relying on your gift. Some people rely on their gift. Some people rely on their gift. That's not going to be my testimony. Yeah, I need to teach Right? I'm even teaching my God daughters that and whatnot. That is important because that's the most important things. People ask, like my mom or even my dad or myself, how are you so angry and whatnot? Because y'all didn't see the training process. Y'all didn't see the sacrifice process. When I wanted to give up, when I was frustrated, when I took certain hits that I'm not going to talk about, you know, unless I feel led and whatnot. It, it, I mean, it costs the oil, but you know what I'm saying? But, it, but certain things, I would say it's worth it. Some things, I'm like, God, I don't know if it's worth it. I'm just be honest, but I'm still trying to get to that part. But some things, like, all right, it was it was worth it because little did I know that one time I went to a 
ATL. I didn't want to go to ATL. I had no desire to go to ATL. To be honest, I didn't really care for the person. But if I didn't go to that, that ATL, I would have not saw that 11-year-old child and broke that depression off her because I saw a funeral. But the moment I prayed and God allowed me to break it off for her, to this day, because I check on her every once in a while, she's a happy kid and haven't had suicide thoughts since. Even more, you never know who you're saving when you put down your pride. Sometimes God has to override your pride. When you put down what you're feeling and get into his presence, get in his presence, you know what I'm saying, get out your feelings. You just never know what the assignment is. And I promise you, when you help others, you're going to benefit off it as well. But it's a learning process, you know, to help grow. You know, not everybody's, you know, able to go with your growth. You have to know to eliminate and terminate. You know, there's certain things you just got to know and use wisdom. But, Dad, I'm sure you can relate to certain things because my dad is young, but my dad has so much wisdom. Like, when I have questions about a study and I don't understand it, he would, I'm like, Dad, what's this mean? And then once I learn his point of view, I still do the study in myself because what God will show him to be something totally different than what he showed me and vice versa. But you still want to learn and get the concept and then you take it on that another level. Right, Dad? That picture's staring at me. But it's still handsome. <laughs> it's looking at you, you know, making sure you, you get it right. And you've done an amazing job. I'm so proud of you. Uh, but again, folks, listen, it is so important for us to recognize that God has something for each and every one of us, not just those of us here on the, on the, on the stage here moderating, but for every person in the listening area, whether you're on Facebook, you're on Clubhouse or whatever, uh, there is a purpose, there is a plan, there is a gift that God has uh, for you. But, you know, as they say, that success is the amalgamation of uh, preparation beaten opportunity. So oftentimes when a door does show up, it is most of the time in direct relationship to the amount of preparation you put into it. And oftentimes God doesn't do anything for us because we are not moving or preparing ourselves for what God wants to give to us. You know, uh, every time God calls a prophet or, or throughout the scriptures, when he calls anyone, there's something they have to do first before he does what he's going to do. And oftentimes we've been taught, you know, through traditional church and doc doctrine and dogma that, you know, if, uh, if, you know, we want the Holy Ghost to do things for us. God will fight for us, the Holy Ghost to do this for us. And we neglect that there's a portion that we have to play. There's a part that we play in our own deliverance. Even those that were, you know, maimed and, and uh, dysfunction in terms of their bodies, uh, the man in the uh, at the pool of Bethesda, it's like he, he wants to be healed. I've been in this condition for over a year, for years actually. And uh, but he, the, the the word to him was, take up your bed and walk. So he could you know, re retort back to Jesus. What do you mean? Take up my bed and walk. Then don't, don't, did you not hear me? I've been this way for years, for a number of years. And you're going to tell me to take up my bed and walk. I need you to do something. And, uh, but because of his obedience and because of his willingness to do whatever, uh, Jesus told him to do, he literally did what he was previously unable to do. Same thing with the man with the withered hand. He says, if you want your withered hand healed, stretch it forth. And so uh, I hope that we're getting the principle out of this, that there is the part that we play in our own deliverance, that God is not, you know, basically our man slave, that he does whatever, he, he, whatever we tell him to do, that's what he does. Uh, but the truth of the matter is that we have a part to play in it. Because again, just like God, the words that proceed out of your mouth will not return unto you void. They will bring back whatever you sent it to go get. If you see and send out words of, of sickness and disease and arthritis, bursitis, or whatever the condition may be, uh, the spirit of God goes out. That's the same spirit of faith. will go out and find those very diseases, dysfunctions, problems, circumstances that you've been talking about. The spirit of faith goes out and finds them and brings them back to you. So that's why it's so important for us to recognize that death and life are indeed in the power of the tongue. So if you're going to go through that open door, don't only look for the door, 
but be prepared to go through the door because, again, the worst thing that could ever happen to us, uh, I think it was uh, Apostle Ebron said that uh, the, to, to enter a door that you've not been prepared for. So embrace the seasons of trials and testings and persecutions because they're often the, the prerequisite for the next level. You know, you can always tell when God is up to something, when things seem to be going awry, when men will say all kinds of manner of evil things against you falsely for for his name's sake. Make sure that it's false. Don't be trying to, if they're telling the truth, don't be, the devil ain't lying. No, the devil ain't lying. He, he told the truth on this one. And just make sure that it's a lie when they say all manner of evil against you falsely for his name's sake. Because oftentimes that that persecution is preparation for promotion. So in everything, give thanks. This is the will of God for all of us to remain in a position of gratitude, to remain in a position of thankfulness that we're constantly giving God glory and praise because we know that the, what we the best for our life is yet to come. You might be in a, even a good place right now. You might not be. Not everybody's always going through you know, some kind of turmoil, some sort of trauma, you know, because there are three types of people in the world. Those that are going through, those uh, that have come through, and those that are about to go through. So we've all been there. But in the same likeness, God is faithful to all. If you go through and you call upon the name of the Lord, his eyes and his ears are not too heavy that he cannot hear the cry of his people. And yet, while we are praying, He's listening. And if he's listening, then we know we have the things that we petition him for. So uh, unique, um, amazing job again. All the moderators, you guys are on fire. Tomorrow, she was fire. <laughs> <laughs> we all sing like that. Probably she, she spirit. <laughs> but yeah, it was so profound what you were saying. And it took me back to the cocoon. Um, cause, you know, I love science. Um, so, you know, the butterfly, well, before it become a butterfly, you know, before, you know, it wraps in that cocoon, I call that the protective layer. And I remember doing a teaching on this in London, but I'll give you the short uh, version of it. So, but do you know that the worm, I'll just call it a worm, will actually stay in the cocoon between 8 to 21 days and possibly longer if it doesn't feel like it's a safe environment. So it won't go out too soon because if it go out too soon, literally without its wings, it will literally, you know, it will literally like crash and whatnot. So in that protective layer, like I said, in that protective season, you don't move unless he tells you to, right? You don't go unless he tells you to because even though, to be honest, they can't see everything out. It's more of a feeling, but they just know mm, it's, it's not safe for me to go. Even the even the little uh, coon butterfly has discernment. So it shouldn't be no reason why we ignore our discernment. And it will literally not go out, even if, even if it's uh, have its wings, because it knows it's not a safe place to fly. And it knows it won't go high in an unsafe environment. But once God gives you that, you know, that red, I mean, that green light to go ahead, you know, once it's applied, you will go high. And that's when, like it says in Romans 8, 39, there's no height, no depth, nor any other creature that can separate from the love of God to separate its purpose. The moment it's born, it immediately it immediately starts the process. It eats the nutrients and the fruit. That's how it grows. It eats all the plants, all the nutrition, nutrition. You know, Psalms 30, you know, 4, 8, you know, say, see that the Lord is good. All right. So before I go out and, and fly out to this world, I'm going to get all the nutrients I need to grow, that physical growth, that mental growth, that spiritual, that spiritual growth. Because even it knows that, you know what, for me to get my wings, I have to go to the process. Because in the process, there is progress. And the thing about it is, you know, we we're talking about um, like certain things we talked about the oil like previously. You know, God is saying is, you know, do not rush the crush. Look at the word crush. It has the word rush. Do not rush the process. You got to go through the, you know, the crushing process. You know, we always talk about the oil. That is true. You got to crush the oil. But do you know a diamond has to be crushed as well? But you know, before it becomes a diamond, it's a rock. It's in that layer. And it takes a, it takes a certain person who is experienced to know and see, like, hmm, it may look like a dirty rock. But you don't see the value inside. That's why I said a right king will recognize a queen. He won't date a peasant. A girl won't compromise and date a peasant, period, because you know your work. You, when you know your work, you put in work. So when they look at the rock, it's, it's in a rock. But the moment they hit it with the hammer, 
the rock, the, the, la the layer that was covering the rock, because God is my rock and my fortress, right? He's my refuge. He's my protector, not neglector, right? So it breaks, and God said, all right, now it's time to expose the glory that I have in you. So you look at the diamond. When the diamond hits the, um, the light from the outside, they call it a uh, fire. But when it hits from the inside, it's called brilliance. So not only as a diamond, you not only have the fire, but you also have its brilliance, right? So with a diamond, even though it may might break it, they might shape it. Because sometimes, you know, it has to be shaped a certain way. It has to be shaped into a ring, you know, shaped to fit a diamond ring. Shaped to fit. Some of you guys get married. I just heard him say that. I, I, I don't even like saying stuff like that, but I'm being obedient. I just heard, get ready for your rings. Prophet is true. But uh, anyways, yes, yeah, so it has to be yeah. so that diamond. So you want to be shaped as a diamond before he comes to propose to you. But at the same time, for him to see that you were already a diamond, he was already prepared as well. So the man has to be prepared as well to handle that diamond, to handle that brilliance, to handle that fire. And the thing about it is they might imitate you, but they can't, they can't, you know, duplicate you, whatnot. What well, they try to imitate God's God would eliminate. For example, so how do they tell if a diamond is real? They put two diamonds in, in, in uh, before they put it in water, they put fire on it, right? So as you know, the real diamond already has the fire, but the other fake diamond doesn't have the fire. It thought it had the fire, but you're not a real diamond. So what they do is they burn it. And so when they burn it, they put it in water. And the real diamond that is real, it floats above the water. But the diamond is, that is fake, it goes ahead and disintegrates. It disappears, right? So in other words, when you're the real diamond, there is no competition, right? Well, you know your worth. You got to remember, you're not a tool. You're not a pedestal, but you're a jewel, right? You That's what you got to remember. You're, if you're really a jewel, you got to know what kind of jewel you are. Some is sapphire. So, you know, some some, some is different kind of diamonds, all equipped in different kind of things, but it's a description of you. I remember, uh, you know, also how they could tell if a diamond is fake. They literally just put fire on it and it just burned and the one is real. Or they put it under a light. Even though it looks a light, but they can never duplicate the light. They cannot duplicate your anointing. So, guys, do not compromise your position. Do not compromise your anointing. Because at the end of the day, when that light hits, when that fire hits, they either get a heat stroke or they get that heat glow. It all depends. It all depends. It don't work because you will out, always outshine the fake. And don't you ever, you know, whatnot, forget that. So I just wanted to put that out there and whatnot, what it is to be a diamond. Like I said, I love science. I'm a science head, and I think it's amazing. So remember, when you're at that position, and it may look like, oh, they have that, they have that. But when it's your time to shine, it will go ahead and handle the fire. Remember, only the real diamond can handle the fire. Even when Moses went to Exodus, you know, he saw the burning bush. He said, Moses... I need you to take off your take off your shoes. It was a fire around there. It was like a, a significant fire around there because he was equipped for that. He was just a diamond. He just didn't know his discovery. That's why I said, when you uncover, you discover. When you discover, you recover. And on the word discover, uncover, recover has the word over. So the thing about it is when you realize what kind of diamond you are, you be like, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm getting back what the what the enemy took. I'm taking back what those people spoke over me. That's that's not true because I know my work now. So the words that you try to hit. And the things you try to say, it's not going to work anymore. It's going to crumble and fumble. So I just want to encourage people like that. I hear God saying, start the business. Start the dream again. Don't give up. Don't give up on a business and dream I had because it failed the second, the first time. If it failed the first time, how about you just sit and get my benefits like it says in Psalm 68, 19. And he said, this time, your business is not going to fail. Your marriage is not going to fail. Your relationship with your children is not going to fail. He said, the relationship with me, I know it fluctuates and whatnot. Because, you know, it's up and down. That's I'm, that's what a relationship is. I even have it with God. It's up and down. But as long as you're consistent, you're consistent, persistent, like literally nothing can really, really stop. Because you remember the port. So you remember, like it says in Romans 839, there's no height nor depth. There's nothing worth. No obstacles, no distraction is not worth it because sometimes it gets ugly before it gets beautiful. You know, life is beautiful with ugly people sometimes. It happens, but you just got to know the position and understand what you in and whatnot. And just remember that even though you crush, it doesn't mean your value has went down because the diamond is still worth a lot. Prophet Sheila, what do you got to say about that? Oh, Lord have mercy. Listen, that was fire. Come on, can we do our fire emoji? <laughs> oh, listen, one of the guys, you that set this room on fire. To God be the glory. What do I say? How do you come behind all that? That's the Bible. Oh, the Oh, my goodness. You get the ring different. You get the ring different when you get uh, engaged. That's what all the ladies, you got to look at that ring different now. It's just a little bit different now. You better say that, Father Janine. You said so much. You said when the real, when, when, when you are the real diamond, there's no competition. So you don't have to be feeling intimidated because of somebody 
conversation you're in, be content. <laughs> well, whatever your open door, your open door may be going to those high schools. Come on, going to those colleges. Come on, come on. It may be on your job. Come on, your assignment. It's about assignment. It's about deployment. Come on, the world looks at it as employment. We look at it as being deployed. Huh? What is your assignment? What has God deployed you to go to do? I feel the weight of God here today. Listen, Romans 12, I'm going to give my life. I promise. Listen, the word of the Lord declares, therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your body, present, present, a gift, your body, dedicating all of yourself, not the part that you feel like you want to get a God, no, all of yourself, set it apart, we should be set apart as a living sacrifice, so, as millennials, don't wait till you in your 50, 60, 70, then you say, myself, Lord, it ain't guaranteed you're going to live to be 50, 60, 70, 80. <laughs> okay. Uh, come on. He wants a living sacrifice. Living, not dead sacrifice. A living sacrifice. Holy, not unholy. Holy and well pleasing to God, which is your what? Rational. This turns that you say rational. The King James says reasonable service, logical, intelligent, act of worship. And be not, be, be not conformed to this world any longer. With its superficial values and customs, but be ye transformed and progressively changed as you mature spiritually by the renewing of your mind, focusing on godly values and ethical attitudes. So that what you may prove for yourself what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect in his plan and purpose for you. I feel the weight of God. <laughs> oh, that was fire. Listen, I'm going to my mic. I'm over here, sir. I feel like running close to the of God. Go back over you. Providence of uh, uh, unique. Listen, I feel the weight of God. Hey, God, thank you. Somebody oh, says that uh, <laughs> apostle, I mean, not apostle, but prophetess Sheila and Unique, they they say you guys should do a collabo. <laughs> Unique, you do the rap, and and Prophet Sheila do the singing, <laughs> and uh, maybe I'll put the beat to it. Yes, and, yes, okay, yes. you put this thing on the road. I mean, no, I'm a, song, I'm, a, I'm a songwriter. I got songs I wrote since I was seven years old. In fact, my dad and I are working on a song that I wrote. So hey, you all game? Let's go. I'm just trying to wait for the right time to release it. I come up with songs every day. I'm ready. Let's go. Ready to the I might do an auto tune though. I might gotta give you the two pain. Yeah, they do the auto tune. Yeah, that's I got all right. You. I got, I got you guys. Don't worry. Thank you. Let me tell you something. They won't know I, the difference. I got this out because I, cause I, cause I come up with so many songs and it's auto tune. Man, that thing be had me sounding like it be sounding so good. I'm like, look at you, me. Like I don't like I'm not that person. I be like hyping myself up until I turn it off. And I'm like, all right, let me get back to studying and going yeah. to my purpose. <laughs> Sounded like Mariah Carey or somebody, but but it's all good. It's all good. Hey, listen, <laughs> folks, this has been an amazing uh, um, couple of hours almost now together. And I pray that you guys have really been blessed. And, um, oh, I wanted to make sure before we close out, uh, Sister um, uh, Anna Brown, if you're in the room um please make sure that you email me at michael norman ministries uh, at gmail.com i have your autographed copy of my book 12 things that ruin relationships i have it ready for you but i don't have an address to send it to so make sure you get in touch with me and for anyone else who wants an autographed copy of course all you got to do is for a donation of 25 dollars or more to cover shipping and handling we'll send that out to you as well back to you unique all right, that's good. You guys get 12 things that ruin a relationship. Obviously, there's more, but at least get the 12 steps before you ask for the, the more of the steps. Get through 1 to 12 first before you get through 22 and up. But make sure you guys get that book. I paid for a book because I support it, and my dad signed my book. It's like I bought my mom's book, and she signed my book. So it's really good. And even as Prophet Sheila was even you know, even talking and whatnot, it's also you got to understand the, the fire. And it took them to the Hebrew boys. Remember, they put them all in the fire, but they didn't realize that they were a diamond. Like, you can't, you can't burn fire with fire when you know how to use it and whatnot. So, you know, I love how you said it's a, it's a sacrifice. You know, to be honest, a giving sacrifice is a living sacrifice. You know, it's how many times we have to give, but we didn't want to. You know, it's kind of uncomfortable. You know, even if it kind of burned a little bit, but you didn't see, like, the ending towards it. That's why it's very important to know why you give me. 
once I'm determined while I'm giving, like, hey, I'm doing it for God, like, for me, and, you know, whatnot, you know, money for God, you know, et cetera, even that person on the subject, it doesn't matter they rejected, they rejected, to be honest, because I didn't do it for their approval, you know, because you do that, that's going to distract you from the, the real roots of why you give, you know, when you sow your fruits, it always tracks to the roots, so I want to say that, and so anybody, too, who are having trouble you know, are having, you know, trouble going through doors, you're not sure, you know, this is the door I should go to, or even, or even it's being sabotaged. I see some of you guys are even dealing with sabotage, you know, whether it's yourself. Some, it's some, I see it even with family members, even with family members. I see like a family business that was kind of start to, start to rotate, but they didn't want to give you a certain kind of, a kind of share and whatnot. It didn't go, it didn't go as planned, but that's okay because God is going to give you another strategy, another idea, or you can still have it in the family business, but you'll choose the right family. You'll still be successful. It's a learning process. But those, you know, who want to go ahead and raise your hand, if you want to get prayed for, like going through the right doors where you won't have any more sabotage, but it'd be broken off you. Sometimes you guys got to go to the root of it. Like, all right, it started with my grandmother. It started with my mother. It started with my father. I know some of you guys may not know your parents, but, you know, seek the wisdom of God and you'll be surprised the certain things that he reveals to you. Like, where is this coming from? So we can shut it down so you can have an open door. Shut that door to have an open door. And I want you guys to go ahead and just raise your hands because, you know, we're going to pray where this door is going to, I hear the Holy Spirit saying it's going to be an expansion. It's going to be an expansion. I even see sponsorship that's going to be, where people are going to start sponsoring your business, even sponsoring weddings and whatnot. And I also hear that, you know, it's just kind of random. I'm also hearing the Holy Spirit saying that he's about to do something for the people who have HIV. This is really regular. No one really talks about it. I like, never judge a person because I actually worked at a, a, juvenile, a juvenile jail where this young girl had HIV because she was the soft, sexually assaulted by her mother's boyfriend. So don't judge because you can say, oh, they're, they're careless. You don't know. That's not always the case. But I hear the Holy Spirit saying is that he's going inside the blood because some of you guys secretly are having like little, um, I don't know much about HIV. I mean, I know enough to what it is, obviously. Uh, but uh, where you having like certain like uh, sores or are outbreak and some is even worse than before but god said there's a healing taking place where you don't have to deal with that you know things that are possible with men there's possible with god where there's about to be a different shipping and healing with people with hiv even stds we don't i even hear him saying stuff about stds you know random stuff that i you know i didn't think about but he said even with stds because some of you guys were born with it some of you guys got assaulted some of you guys were careless that is true but you're not that person anymore, as long as you don't keep repeating it, where, you know, he's saying he's doing a healing in that as well. And a protection and a blockage for the ones who are purposely infecting people with an SD because they're angry. God said he's also doing healing from people who got who got those certain kind of disease, even with cancer and whatnot, that you're kind of angry, that he's healing your heart as well. So the anger won't take you out. It's not the, the sickness or the disease. It's the anger that's that's trying to take you out. And so he wants to close that door. So when we expose it, we close it. What are I say that's what an intercessor is. We don't accept, you reject, and you intercept. So God is saying is just because, don't let an HIV stop the purpose of the plans that I have for you. Still go ahead and start it where you want to help other people. He said, don't be ashamed. He said, just be real and open because people need to know there's some hard-headed people out there. But he just want to say that for those with STDs and HIV, he said, you have not forgotten. He said, I have not forgotten you. I'm still doing healing in your body, and I'm still doing healing changes to you as well. And I just want to encourage the people who are dealing with that or know someone who has that, that healing is going to be, it's going to be such an unusual healing. It's going to be so unusual, it's going to become usual. But you don't even have to use the medication. Some of you guys don't even have to. You won't even have to start. So just know that, that he got you, and just stay focused and that you still matter. Like I said, as long as your heart beats, your purpose beats. Your heart beats, your purpose beats. And so the ones who raise their hands about uh, opening doors, where we're going to stop the, you know, sabotage, we're going to stop the manipulation. I also hear the word manipulation, you know, the frustration. We're going to stop that. Uh, Mike Ebron, can you go ahead and pray um, over those people, you know, who want answers to have the open door? They've been waiting a long time, but God said it's going to be surpassed that it's not just doors, but it's about to be gates in their hands. Absolutely. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we lift up these people unto you this morning, Lord God. And, Father, we ask, Lord, now that every plot, plan, and scheme of the adversary, Lord God, that it be annihilated in the realm of the Spirit this day, Lord. 
We ask you, Lord, by faith and by way of prayer and intercession this day, Lord God, that you would break every form and fashion of self-sabotage, Lord God. We thank you, Lord, now in the name of Jesus, that you will provide your divine strength, your divine wisdom, Lord God, upon each and every individual, Lord, that have raised their hand, those that are watching on Facebook and YouTube, Lord God. We thank you that a fresh anointing is pouring out this day, Lord God. We thank you, Lord, that you're increasing discernment, Lord God, in this very hour, Lord God, over every opportunity, over every collaboration, over every project, Lord God, over every calling and purpose, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. We thank you, Lord, that you are setting your people before, Father, their season, their Goshen season, Lord God, the season of divine provision, Lord God. We thank you, Lord, that you're giving them the mindset, Lord God, to adapt to this shift, Lord God, that you're putting them in. And even as we're in the month of March, Lord, we thank you that there's new momentum coming for acceleration, new momentum coming for execution, Lord God. We thank you, Lord, that every plot and every plan and Lord God, according to your will, will be deemed successful that you have already acknowledged us as being victorious in the earth, Lord God. We thank you, Lord, that you're summoning us to the forefront in this very hour, Lord God. We thank you that even those that are introverted by nature, Lord God, that this is even the opportune time, Lord, that their gifts, their calling, their passion, and the mandate on their life, Lord God, is causing them to come to the forefront in high demand, Lord God. Father, now in the name of Jesus, Lord God, we thank you that you, Lord, are the voice to those that have been deemed voiceless in the earth, Lord God. We thank you, Lord, that every person that have been overlooked, Lord God, that they're coming into their season, Lord, that the anointing is now peaking, Lord God. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray, Lord, that you're not just doing it for the church community. You're not just doing it for those that have been called to the fivefold. But God, we thank you, Lord, that this grace, this oil, this anointing, Lord God, is for all mankind. It's for every man. It's for every woman, Lord God. It's for those that you have called to the marketplace, Lord God, those that you have called to the different sectors of the seven mountains, Lord God. Father, now in the name of Jesus, Lord, we break the spirit of defeat. We break the spirit of oppression. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you, Lord, that it's in you that we move. It's in you that we live and it's in you that we have our being, Lord God. I thank you for internal peace, peace on the inside, Lord God. Lord, your word declares that you will give us peace that surpass all understanding. So I thank you that no obstacle, no op no option, Lord God, Father, will interfere with what you're doing in this very hour, Lord God. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, that there's a strong drawing that's happening, taking place in this very hour, that there's those that are coming out of suicidal ideation in this very moment, Lord God. There are those that are being healed in their physical bodies, Lord God, those that are being restored in their spiritual mind, Lord God. I thank you that you are sharpening our discernment, you're sharpening our our wisdom, you're sharpening our re uh, res uh, res uh, res uh our revelation in this very hour, Lord God. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you for new communities and new tribes, Lord, strengthening us in this very hour. Now, Lord, before we leave this place, I ask, Lord, that a special grace come upon every moderator. May it come upon Apostle Francina Norman and her entire family in this very hour. Lord, I thank you for the assignment of prophetic intercession of the Movement Church in Orlando. And Father, I ask, Lord, that you would bless us with miracle signs and one supernaturally abundantly and above all that we can ask and or think or even imagine in jesus mighty name i pray and say amen 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 and every sabotage be broken off as well off of the lineage off of their bloodline and it will be reversed so they will go ahead and just go ahead and succeed i concur with what uh mike ebron said and also fyi if i ever send a request i know it's weird because i don't know you guys i'm just being led by the holy spirit just just accept it if you can. So so I sent a request. It's up to you if you want to accept it or not. I released the word that God told me to give you, but it's up to you if you want to accept it. Other than that, just go ahead and uh, move on. But think about it is, is that when he was talking about healing, it's so important because when you're when you're not healed, you know what I'm saying, you really can't build. Like it really it really causes blindness to where that where God's really wants you to see where he wants to open your eyes. And I always say, you know, I actually wrote a song about it, a broken heart is a broken home to a broken door. And he doesn't want you to have brokenness. He wants you to have wholeness. And that is something that I want everybody to partake on this. And we gave you the strategies and analogies and whatnot, how to walk through your open door. Keyword, 
It didn't say how to walk through a door that's trying to be open. It's saying how to walk through your open door. So now that you have the tools, still get the training and make take time. But when you're ready, you be steady. And that's how you walk through your open door. So speaking of announcements, um, I told this young lady that I would go ahead and announce it. I, I forgot, but I'm glad I remember today. If you are in need of a battle buddy, all you have to do is go to BrentCenaNormanMinistries.org. Follow the uh, the steps and just put in that request. So again, if you want a battle buddy, a battle buddy is just, is the same thing as a prayer partner, a prayer a prayer warrior. And when I assign you these people, because they will tell me, you know, make time. Don't have me assign because that's not fair. And then you don't you don't you don't stay on your part. You don't you don't contact them or whatnot. That's not fair. Only if you are serious. Real talk. I'm being honest. You know, I'm keeping it real. Only if you're serious. I will go ahead and be more than happy to assign you a battle buddy. As we were talking about open doors and whatnot, the Holy Spirit was letting me know that it's it's time to do a room again for for the for the youth. It's going to be for all ages, but I'll let you guys know the, the right timing that He wants me to do. And I'm just going to be pouring out and ministering to to your kids and even even you as well. And again, if I randomly send you a request to come on a stage or whatnot. I promise you it's, it's, it's for a reason. So I'm going to be doing that soon. I'll let you know to have your, to get your kids, your teens, all ages. And I'm going to have, you know, all ages and whatnot. My dad and I, we did it a couple months ago. I call it DAD, dad and daughter. It was a dad and daughter webinar. And we were hitting on all kinds of things like resentment I felt towards my, my, my dad or what it was like raising girls, what it was like raising, you know, daughters. And I was let them know how relationship with your father, you know, it, it can't it can affect your dating life. It can, it can affect your relationship, even with your in your parents in general. And I talked about that as well. And that was a, a good webinar. And I'll let you know we're going to do part two. But it was really, I'm just very blessed that I had not only my spiritual father in heaven, but I had my dad as well to give me guidance. And we were, he was, you know, helping not only just girls, but men, you know, to talk from man perspective, you know, some of the anger they were dealing with. So I think that we should probably do a live dad and daughter Maybe like a, something where we just talk and pour out to all ages. So that'll be coming soon. So other than that, there is no other announcement. Thank you to all the moderators, uh, the ones who are behind the scene, in front of the scenes, the one who sing, the one who like to say promise, or the, even the ones who work it. We appreciate you and everything like that. And thank you for the ones who are still supporting us, even though my mother wasn't in the in the room, but you know I really uh, appreciate it. So again, get your kids and whatnot ready. I actually been doing things with kids on on the low, but I'll start doing it publicly, you know, and whatnot. So this is this is this, it won't be nothing new, but it will be something good and beneficial, you know, something like even when I was at Dr. Rosa's church, um, I poured out to this young lady and whatnot. I said, you, I said, I said, you want to be a lawyer? She was like, nobody ever knew that. And I said, this little girl is so intelligent. In fact, I'm thinking, you know what? When we do that, I'm going to actually uh, bring her. And uh, Miss Twyla, bring your 11-year-old daughter. I mean, 11-year-old, I think you said niece, the one that I, that I spoke over for who, who wants to commit suicide. Now she's happy. So we're going to show examples, all right? We ain't just talking. We're going to show examples. And it's not just, an, oh, this is a display. It's not a display. It's just showing you what you're about to get, what you're about to encounter, what's about to happen to you. For him to bring this out, it's going to be beneficial. So, again, thank you to everyone. Uh, Prophet Sheila, Dr. Michael, you guys got anything to say before we close out this round? Okay, don't forget to join me tonight. Great job again, Unique, and every one of the moderators. And much love to everyone in the listening lounge. I, I, I saw so many of your wonderful com your comments in the uh, chat room. So thank you for your chatting it up back there as well. Uh, don't forget to join me tonight at uh, 7 p.m. for Wis uh, Wisdom Blueprint tonight, right back here in Clubhouse, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then uh, I do want to remind you that month of March is our algorithm of wealth. This is one of the most powerful webinars that, I, that we do because it affects your finances and your capacity to gain finances. Not just, you know, talking about praying for increase. We're giving you the tools and the techniques that you literally have in your hands that you don't even realize that can be used to bring you into a level of generational wealth. We're going to talk about that during the algorithm of wealth. It's, uh, uh, it's going to be March 30th. So you can mark that down, save the date. We're setting it up and we'll let you know when the tickets are available. But March 30th, algorithm of wealth. This is going to be the second installment. I think this is the second time that we're doing it. So we're taking it to a whole other level. So we'll look forward to seeing you there. Okay. All right. 
and again, if you want to uh, do a, a battle buddy send a request, go to freshstormministries.org, fill out that form, and then I'll go ahead and sign you. And again, we'll let you know we're going to uh, do the room. It's going to most likely be in my mom's room. I'm not trying to do no, I'm not trying to have my own room. That's not going to happen. But it most likely be in my mom's room. We'll talk, we'll talk about it and correlate that. So again, make sure you guys join that webinar. That Make sure you remind them again tomorrow the next day. You got to get it in for Apostle Prince Cedar North, but you got to be quick with it. But make sure you get it in. So, again, thank you guys for your commentary. You guys enjoy the rest of your week. And you know I got to play my outro music. Anybody in here blessed? Anybody in here blessed?